Hey guys, it's Ethan. Today I wanted to do a video on Pi-hole, the DNS. And for this video, I'm actually going to be using a real Raspberry Pi, though you can run a Pi-hole DNS sync off of anything. I have right now currently a virtual machine running off of my server computer that's running my Pi-hole DNS sync. So you can do it basically off of any system though I do recommend that you isolate the system so it's only doing that one task. So whether you choose to do it on a system and dedicate the system to it, like for example in the case of a Raspberry Pi, or do it in a virtual machine or a Docker instance, just some isolated case, that's my recommendation, though I don't think you necessarily have to. Now, to start off with the process, you're going to head to pihole.net and we're going to go take a look at the supported operating systems. So officially supported is the Raspberry Pi OS on the ARM architecture, Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, or Cent OS. Um, you can see the supported architectures here. I think my Raspberry Pi is actually just x86, so I'm not sure if this is going to work the perfectly on my Raspberry Pi, but I guess we'll have to see. Can't I check like uh, CPU info? Right, I believe it is just x86. Oh, okay, no, it is ARM. Okay, so that works out. So uh, with that being said, I guess let's get started. So if you head down to the install Pi-hole page and you click, it'll take you over to this little GitHub. And all you really need for this to work is just the curl link. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that over and run it here. And this curl link is going to run the install script. So it's checking that you have sudo. One of the things I dislike about this process is that you need to have sudo. Though, if you just grab the git clone, like the actual script over here, head into the directory, and then run the sh with your prefix. For example, I did it with duas, but I think you can do it with su dash, dash c. Hard to speak. You don't actually have to have sudo, but it does check. Now it's saying that this is going to transform our device, and it will. It's going to basically hijack the device, which is why I recommend doing a uh, a system where it's dedicated. And it's going to want a static IP address. This is basically standard stuff. We're going to run this off of, I believe this is the WLAN zero because I'm not plugged into Ethernet on this machine. Oh, you know what? Let me cancel out of this. I think I might have run the wrong... I think space is what applies, not enter. Alright, let's try that again. Yeah, space, okay. Next page. We're just gonna go with... Um, oh man, there is some delay. Let's go with Cloudflare. We're gonna just say defaults here, defaults here. All right, this is looking good. And we're gonna to wanna to keep this IP in mind. So whatever's coming up here is your IP address, keep this in mind. And then we're gonna enable the web interface and the web server. And then we definitely, one of the coolest thing is to log query, so I recommend it. And then we're gonna show everything. So we're gonna let this clone the repository, run everything that it needs to with our settings and then I'm not sure how long it'll take so I guess I'll just come back when it's finished alright so when this is finished configuring itself and getting all set up you'll see which is something that you want to look out for is if the IPv4 works but the IPv6 doesn't just keep that in mind that basically means anything going over IPv6 isn't going to be uh, touched by pie hole at least if I recall correctly that's how this works but basically keep this link in mind which we're gonna copy that right now and the login password which we're gonna keep that in mind I'm actually just gonna copy the password for now but we're gonna say okay and now pie hole is taken over the system so what we can do we could type I believe pie hole is a command that you can type if you want to configure it from here and you can actually uh, I believe there is a password section I'm looking for it. I've done this before. Uh, where is it?
Okay, I'm not sure if I remember where it is, but I definitely know that you can change the password from here. It might actually be... this is the dash H. Regardless, let's go to the actual important stuff. So open up a web browser, and I'm going to actually use this one over here. And in here, you're going to want to type in the IP address of your device. So mine is 1.65 slash admin. And this is going to take you to the admin interface of your Pi-hole server, your new one. We're going to make it a little bit bigger. We can see here my host name is Raspberry Pi, right? And we have like some things like the memory usage, for example. These are kind of cool statistics to have the load. And what's important is the login. And you're going to take that password that you copied a second ago. And you're going to paste that in there or keep it in mind. You can say remember me if you want and go ahead and log in. Because once you're in your admin interface, we're going to save that. Once you're in your admin interface is where things can get kind of interesting. So the query log, which there shouldn't really be anything in here quite yet, nothing important, is one of the most important things to piehole that you can have. Basically, you can monitor the input and output of things going on in your network and the devices. So if you go down to... I believe it is group management and you go down to domains you can add regex filters which are like lists big lists of um, domains that you can block so for example if I go to my actual pie hole which I believe is 36 this is the one I'm running off of my virtual machine you can see a lot goes on here but one of the most important things and I'm probably going to censor most of this out because this is my stuff. Here is my main computer, for example, right now. These are all mine, so it's actually fine to show it. Um, things like, you can see, okay, Mojang, Litecord, GitHub, Mojang, GitHub, Mojang. You can see, basically, everything that's leaving and coming to my computer, you can monitor. And you can see my client is one is a... Uh, dot six that's my client it tells you the timestamps and I can say you know what I don't want Mojang at all to be able to touch my computer right blacklist that and then when the request comes to send it to your computer or to leave your computer it'll go no and it'll block it and what this means is you can go down to like uh, your group management and you can go to domains and you can have huge amounts of ad lists these are all ads. All of these places, or at least for the most part, these are regex filters. The .txt files are not actually domains. They're um, lists of... And you can grab these if you want. I'm not going to leave them in the description because there's just a lot of them and you probably don't want all of them. But these are basically just... Um, I'll actually make it bigger just in case you did want to copy that. Make it a little bit easier to see them. And I'll go to the next page. Uh, the next page is nothing. The reason that this is really important is that means that now you can basically de-bloat your network usage. So this can block a lot of ad providers. So without getting the issue of like, oh, you have an ad block, you can't go to this website, for example, you'll still be blocking the majority of like these pop-up ads, like maybe on the side of your websites or maybe popping up on the screen. And of course, you do want to supplement that with an ad blocker, like you block Origin, for example. But regardless very 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 important to have but now we have to talk about how to actually add a computer to this so the way that you go about that on Linux at least is etc resolve.conf now what's in resolve.conf that's so important it's your name server and this is basically what's resolving while wow, believe it or not this name might be there for a reason the IP addresses that you're getting it's a DNS right so you can take the IP of your pie hole server and add it as a name server and then you're going to want to change attributes to dash I or is it plus I I believe it's actually plus I but I might want to man that really quickly so I can tell you properly let me head down to it I Okay, so with the i attribute, it cannot be modified. So yeah, it is plus i. You add the i attribute to a file. In this case, we're adding it to the resolve.conf because this gets changed per boot. Like, 
uh, when the init system is adding your network, it'll usually go to your default networks um, DNS. But in my case, we're just doing a single system because you usually don't want to do this for the whole router, especially if it's like um, you have multiple people on your router, but you're only looking to like deal with yourself. You want to do it on just your local system like this. So once you have that set up, all of your network will come through. I'm looking for it right now. Uh, where did I leave it here? Right. We head over to my query log again, just for a look. What I can do, you can see why I have Minecraft. I've got Minecraft open right here. If I go ahead right now and say uh, ping google.com, right? We'll ping it a couple times, cancel the ping. If I go over to the pie hole that my system is connected to and refresh, wow, we've got some new IPs here. We've got google.com, we've got a couple of these IP addresses that are being sent places, right? So this is basically what this is for, and it's kind of nice to have because I can say now blacklist Google and then I won't have to worry about Google having anything to do with my system so I guess it's just something to look into Pihole is a very very useful tool and I definitely recommend uh, getting one set up for at least yourself if not your whole network so anyways that's all from me I'll see you next time bye bye